Yeah. And we are, we are. We're going to. I'm going to get Peter to respond. I'll just say one more question. No, not hang on. Peter's going to respond. When I spoke of diagnosis and prescription, I was really talking about something somewhat broader than what the Obama administration is doing today. What I was thinking and attempting to convey is the idea that if we assume that our problem is with capitalism, then of course the prescription is going to be to regulate and control the way the economy works. If your diagnosis is that the problem is Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and government policy that distorted the way mortgage loans are made, then it's a much more simple prescription, and that is stop it. Okay. Final, final question. We're talking on two different uh, levels. One is the question of I think abolition of Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae is fine as part of a long run solution. I'm thinking about what do we do in the short run? If we're really worried about a continued downward spiral, possibly inflation, then we have to do a lot of emergency things the bailouts, the mortgage relief. Now, some of these may be ineffectual, some of, some of them may have very fewer uh, prospects, but as I say, if the, if the economists can't agree, on what you do as emergency measures, then it becomes prudent for the government. But the issue is, Judge, we're getting we're giving the same bureaucrats the free reign to who the people got us into this mess trying to fix the problem. Well, what do you want to do? I don't know what else to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good art, it's a, either an eloquent case for term limits or capital punishment. So the final question. Right here. This overlaps with the last question, but I think Astrology looks respectable. No, my, biggest, my biggest criticism of the government and the economic profession is not that they didn't foresee this and so on. It's that they didn't have any contingency plans. And what that means is that when the collapse occurred in last September and surprised almost everybody, the government was forced into kind of spasmodic improvisations to try to deal with the problem. Because of that, because there was no plan, rapidly became politicized and demagogue. And I was surprised, actually, that uh, Obama, with his very elaborate transition plan that began last summer, didn't come into office with a plan. It was say A, B, C, D, F, G. It turns out that because of inherent complexities or lack of agreement among experts, that there's still a tremendous amount of fumbling. So it's very unfortunate, and I think if there had been better planning, um, if people had said, look, we only think there's a 1% chance of a terrible collapse, but we'll, you know, we'll have a contingency plan for that as with other emergency plans. You know, it's like the COG program, you know, continuity of government. Ever since the beginning of the Cold War, the government has had very elaborate plans for continuing government in Washington and it's taken very seriously, and over a 50-year period, we're prepared for that. We're, but somehow, we never prepared for this kind of economic collapse, I think because of complacency on the part of many economists, and warnings by Mr. Wallace and by others about the risks of a Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and a bunch of other uh, dysfunctional features of our banking system. They just weren't evil. So that, that I think. Well, you make a good case in your book, too, about similar to Pearl Harbor, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You look back, you see a lot of warnings, and you weren't needed. Right? All right. I am so sorry. Forgive me. We didn't get to all of your questions. I'm so sorry. But these two lovely gentlemen, brilliant, will be there for your time.